And so we can't look at this guy as mm-hmm. an average human being because he is not. The, the gods, right. as they say in the movie, the gods turned his arm into a thunderbolt, right? Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. Well, I hope everyone had a successful Memorial Day weekend and you celebrated appropriately and remembered the heroes as we should. Um, digging into today's Q&A, we got, a, we got a busy week. We got to dig right into this. Had a great Q&A with Jen and Jen works with professional baseball pitchers. The big concern there is how do we manage relative motions in regards to force production? How much do we need to restore? And this is a really important point that we made during the conversation is that we have to look at these people as N equals one. Uh, because while there are certain things that all pitchers have to do, they will they will achieve their outcomes um, very specifically to their idiosyncratic structure and ranges of motion. And so this was a this was a, a big concept that we talked about. We also talked about uh, key performance indicators, and then um, how we look at the different ways that they do produce internal and external rotation. So again, it's very idiosyncratic. Um, so again, great conversation with Jen. Thank you so much uh, for your participation there. Um, if you would like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, and put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it. We will arrange that at our mutual convenience. Um, don't forget to go to the YouTube page and subscribe there as well so you can go back and look at all of these videos that go way back a couple years now. All right, so got to run. Busy Tuesday. You guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. The clock has started. Jen, what is your question? Great. So yeah, my question comes to, you know, when it comes to performance and generating force, how do you determine when restoring some level of relative motion is beneficial versus not? Does it depend on the sport, right? Like a um, um, power lifter versus, you know, baseball athlete? Does it depend on the individual? Obviously a KPI. And maybe to give you a little bit more context, um, I, I work primarily with pitchers. And so this one particular pitcher, he's in the major leagues, quite efficient at what he does. He serves 98, yep. but not considered a good mover um, yep. from a traditional sense. Yep. He uh, appears to be at end game, straight leg raise at 40 degrees bilaterally, hip flexion at 80, hip IR 5, 10 if I'm being generous, bilaterally, hip ER at about 40. Uh, in the past, has dealt with some low back tightness no kidding, um, bicipital tendinopathy. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if I'm right here in my thinking, like he's clearly minimized these relative motions to be able to generate a lot of force, but by doing so has created a great deal of focal loads at these tissues. Mm-hmm. Uh, also doesn't seem very efficient in that he's a very kind of linear in his delivery versus rotational. Is and he so real tall? I wonder, is he, is he real tall? tall? Yeah. Yeah. Tall okay. Before. So he should, so he should, he should, he should appear to be more linear in his delivery because he's got more rotational capability than somebody that's wider. He's right. still turning. He's still turning, right. but he turns. So, so, so here's, here's the, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt her, but I got a little excited no. when I found out he's tall. Um, so, so when, when, a, when, when you have a taller, narrower human being, their turn is much tighter. And so they, mm-hmm. so their delivery is definitely more in a straight line. Is he left-hander? No, he's right. Okay. Okay. That I, I'm good because I lefties are a little a little odd, but not not terribly. Um, but 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 just in, in generally speaking, it's like you're going to see this more straight line delivery um, in in many of those cases. And so then you think about what is going to be the strategy to keep that turn as tight as possible, so it is as straight a line as possible as he's delivering the de- going to home play. Mm-hmm. Um, when you define somebody as not a good mover that throws 98 miles an hour in the major leagues, um, I don't know that that's an appropriate way to express that because he's doing exactly what he is being paid <laughs> to do, right? Fair. So, so, so what, what we're talking about is specificity, and then we're looking at his strategy to achieve the desired outcome. Um, I'll let you in on a little dirty little secret. Um, mm-hmm. Simone Biles. It, the, mm-hmm. arguably the greatest gymnast that has ever lived. Um, if you were to measure her, I have no doubt in my mind, never measured her, but I've measured enough gymnasts to know that they're not always great movers either. They're very, very good at certain things that's, mm-hmm. that make them stand out in their sport, right? But when we compare them to averages, 
they 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 fall way off the chart. And so we can't look at this guy as mm -hmm. an average human being because he is not the the gods. Right. As they say in the movie, the gods turned his arm into a thunderbolt, right? And right. so, so we have to look at him as an individual. So you're absolutely right. N equals one is in play, right? Right mm -hmm. here. Um, KPIs, absolutely. But here's the thing that that a lot of people don't recognize um, is that when we're talking about performance, and, and again, we're talking about something that's really, really specific here, is is his KPI is going to be different than, than, than someone else's. His ability to generate force is going to be a little bit different from someone else's. There's a lot of things that are the same when we're talking about pitchers, but we have to treat them as individuals because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and so you got a guy that that really knows how to, to reduce relative motion, which get, makes him a high force producer. And he's got to do it over the smallest increment of time possible. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing to keep in mind is, is you're using normal average comparison table tests, okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that he doesn't produce internal rotation and that doesn't mean that he doesn't produce external rotation. It just means he doesn't produce it in the place that you're used to measuring based on averages, okay? Right. okay. So chances are, when you look at it, it's like, he's got hardly any hip internal rotation, awesome. He's still jamming it, force into the ground. This is why I define internal rotation as a downward force because that's where right. it goes, right? Mm -hmm. So so he's got a way, and you'll know mm -hmm. better than I will because you've, you've measured him directly. He's got a way to produce that force into the ground. He does it very, very quickly. And then he also has a way to produce the ER. Mm -hmm. Concern that you have is where is he doing this? And I, and you've already expressed that. You go, is he doing his tissues? Most likely he is. And then it's your job to say, okay, this is where I think we're okay. Here's where I think I need to step in. And the mm -hmm. only way, the only way you're ever going to know is to train him. Mm -hmm. Because you just have to get to know this person. Because while there are, you know, physiologically, there are certain elements within a baseball pitch that have to occur. His physical structure is going to determine how he does it. And right. when he does it. Right. That's why we all don't get to throw 98 miles an hour in the major <laughs> leagues is because right. he's different. I mean, he, like he found, he found what he was good at. He found a way to do it. And mm -hmm. then your job, no pressure here, right? Right. Your right. job is to make sure that his superpower doesn't come back to destroy him because it will, it will, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's had a couple of things going on where he goes, okay, the low back gets tight. You get the little biceps load. Okay. So, so basically, right. When you get the biceps load, you know you've got a deceleration issue there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so again, you have to kind of figure out, it's like, okay, how does he do these things? You know he's going to have a max propulsion in there. Mm -hmm. Has to, has to. Mm -hmm. You know he's going to have to have a demonstration of external rotation somewhere because that kind of velocity does not show up in internal rotation, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a power lifter with sustained, sustained propulsion where there's no mm -hmm. time constraint, right? Mm -hmm. um, it'll show up very, I mean, it'll be identified very, very easily. But in his case, um, you're probably just going to have to look at some, I mean, I'm, I know you guys would have it, you'll have the high speed videos and, mm -hmm. and all that, that, that you can kind of look at and you say, okay, here's where this is happening. This is where I need to monitor. And that's going to guide you in your process. So, so looking at, um, he gets quite a significant anterior pelvic orientation. So that's probably his downward force. And, and potentially where some of the low back discomfort may be coming from. Right. So, so he hits the ground with his lead foot. Right? Yeah. And, and, and that's where, that's where the, the early to max propulsion is going to come from. Right. Right. So that energy travels up through him and then you get to decide it's like, okay, how much of this are we allowing? Right. Because mm -hmm. I, and it kind of you, you stated this in, in email. It's like it's like if you restore too much relative motion, do you destroy his superpowers? Absolutely, that's entirely uh. possible. Yeah. Now it all it, and it's going to depend. So he's on a he's a major league pitcher, so he's on a five day rotation. Yeah. About yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they're typically on a five day. Okay. Um, and so what you're going to find is here's what I would do is I would measure the bejesus out of him. Um, throughout that five day cycle, because it's gonna mm -hmm. give you clues as to where and when you need to intervene to sort of give him a little bit more relative motion and then expect it to disappear as he, right. as he reaches the okay. point where he's going to perform at, at his maximum capabilities. And so what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this little cycle appear as to, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, and, and you've measured these guys after they throw, I'm assuming, right? 
Yes. So, yeah. so you know how everything just kind of disappears and absolutely, yeah. yeah it makes you feel like exactly. you're not making any progress with people, but at the same time, it's you know you're they're, you're giving them maybe a little bit, but then they're using you know what they need and going back. But right. so there's this give and take and the fine line of of what that is. Absolutely. So 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 now you you can but what you can do, like I said, you you measure these guys over time, and then you sort of get to know them. You say, okay, so if if uh, and I, whether he's a starter, whether he's not, I'm going to treat him like a star. So let's just say he throws he throws. 100 pitches, six innings, something along those lines, right? And then you have this expectation of what you should see in your in your table tests. And then you say, okay, I'm going to give you back a bunch today to, mm -hmm. to promote the recovery, you know, th that process so we can get that started. But I, what I'm going to say is like on day two, it's going to be this. On day three, it's going to be this. On day four, it's going to be this. Ah. And then day five, I'm going to know that you're going to be prepared. It would be like um, when you work with sprinters, um, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of interim rotation either. Um, mm -hmm. because their their ground contact time is is so brief it's like well think about a baseball pitch so you're like seven to nine thousand degrees per second of of of, of arm speed right mm -hmm. that's faster than sprinters right mm -hmm. and so, so this is a really 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 kind of a, a fast thing so so the amount of internal rotation that they end up with is very very little um so if i get if i had a sprinter that showed up one day and they have like 40 degrees of internal rotation, I start to get worried because it's like, this guy's not ready to run mm -hmm. his best race because mm -hmm. that's a lot of, that's gonna be a lot of energy that's gonna be distributed to managing position. Whereas, right. you know, it's like, you know, you take your, your, your pitcher and you say, you know, maybe I don't want full internal rotation on game day. Right? right. But but by looking at him over a long enough period of time, I can say that, okay, we're in this range where I think you're gonna do really, really well, right? Mm -hmm. Don't tell him because they're, they're yeah. You yeah, don't want to totally. <laughs> disturb them, right, but but again, but you'll know. So so you'll know what to monitor and and when. And then if you do see some sort of deficit in performance that shows up, because they it always happens, right? There's so sure. many things that are unpredictable when, sure. during the execution, you know, of, of the game itself. It's like, mm -hmm. but when you see certain things start to show up, and then you can you can like stick your nose and you go, hey, you might want to monitor the next ten pitches here. And if it doesn't start to come back, you probably want to think about, you know, pulling this guy or you say he's doing great. Everything is exactly where we want to let him go kind of a thing. And then you then you provide a really useful and powerful influence. So let me ask you this in a picture like that, um, who clearly has more focal loads on tissues. Would it behoove like a, a front office to use a picture like that in more of like a reliever setting with a workload maybe is a little bit less versus a starting pitcher? That's a, that's a, that's again, that's a really tough call because I think that, I think you have to kind of rely on, on um, the consistency of, of behaviors that you're going to, that you're going to identify. I think you're, that you're, again, you have, you have a very powerful influence here when it comes to decisions like that, because you're the one that spends the time with them. You're the one that gets to know them, whereas the front office is taking this you know, this 20,000 mm -hmm. foot view of the team and they're saying, okay, what fits best under these circumstances? And so you get to have that conversation with those people and you say, you know, so-and-so is doing really, really well under these circumstances. And again, it's mm -hmm. like, if you have enough data over time and you can, again, our predictions are lousy, let's sure. not worry about those, but we do have tendencies that we can say, hey, you know, under these circumstances, you did really, really well. That might be a consideration. Okay. And then so, what about, um a pitcher that it's still in the developmental process. He's in the, our minor league system and maybe presents in a similar fashion. Could we potentially try and give him more relative motion? He has a longer runway to maybe then utilize those new motions, learn a new delivery and thoughts there. And then maybe you extend a career. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But again, you know, the process, I, I always look at this as, the, as this process that doesn't change because mm -hmm. we're still going to do the same thing. We're still going to accumulate data. We're still going to look for the, for the KPIs, right? And, and he's going to eventually show us what, what his needs are. But you're right. You do have developmental time here. So your experiment is a lot, you, you have a much mm -hmm. broader time for, for safe to fail experiments here where you can just say, okay, let's, let's put him in this situation. Let's give him this. And then let's just see how he performs because what you might do is unlock something that's really, really important. So, right. you know, I, I, I work with a lot of guys out, out in Arizona and, and they work with a lot of baseball guys too. And then, you know, you give these guys a little bit of something and right. then they, yeah. they, they, they tap into two, three miles per hour, which gets them a better look. Right. 
and and or or you buy them more pitches per appearance. Holy mm -hmm. cow! It's like little things like that. When when you're in those developmental um, stages, really powerful because, like I said, you do have the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, very very helpful. Very helpful. Um, well, I think you're already on it. I I I think you kind of knew the answers before we started talking. You know, you you just needed somebody else to say, yeah, you're on point ten. I, no, I, absolutely. You're, you're yeah. on. I I don't I doubt you for that. a second. I don't doubt you for I, a second. I appreciate that. How are we doing on time? We're good. Keep going. Okay. All right. Okay. So as far as um, strategies for this particular player, we've I've utilized rolling patterns, lazy bear positions, so on and so forth. It, it kept it within, you know, the, um, that sort of kind of easier uh, yep. activities for him. Yep. Tried to sprinkle that in through his lifts um, as well, um, using his lift almost like a recovery strategy versus adding more load to the system. Correct. He's already a good go. compressor. He's already right. a good compressor. It's like so. So this this is going to come turn into one of these conversations about oh, he just needs to get stronger kind of thing. No. Yeah. Okay. No, I, th I think his force production is not is not your greatest concern right now. I think I think that again, looking at his numbers, um, he's already great at that. Um, I mean, it, it, what what is it worth? Is it worth trying to chase higher force production for somebody that already throws? You know, it, in the, he's probably top one percent velocity you know, already in, in the major right. league. It's like, okay, what is the advantage there? It's like, did you just steal 20 pitches from his next appearance, you right. know, or did you, did you buy him, you know, a faster recovery and then getting ready for the next game? It's like, that's right. that again, that's your experiment. But, but I would say that, that, yeah, it was like, when you got this guy in the, in the, uh, the weight room, I think, I think the strategy is to make sure you don't take away something. Right. right? And then just make sure that he has everything that he needs. And, and your data is going to tell you. It's like, what are his numbers? When when does he look the best? You know, mm -hmm. you you compare his 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 uh, his bullpens, and mm -hmm. and uh, then you, like I said, you just track him over time, and and he'll start to show you what he needs to do. Absolutely, excellent. Well, I appreciate your time. I'll say I'll save. Very my, very welcome. It's always fun to talk coaches. about this kind of stuff. Definitely wonderful. Thanks, Bill. All right. I'll see you later, Jay. Right.